Time now for Focus. And today, to mark International Women's Day, we have a report on a hospital in northern France that has a team of domestic violence experts working closely together. At Boulogne-sur-Mer Hospital, women who've been abused don't just see a doctor. They can get psychological help, even legal advice, if they want it. Domestic violence is the number one cause of death for European women aged 16 to 44. France 24's Alexandra Renard and Clara Castelli report with Patrick Lovett. The emergency services of Boulogne-sur-Mer's hospital. Not a day goes by without victims of domestic violence coming here to seek help. Domestic violence begins either in the emergency unit or sometimes, sadly, directly at the morgue. That's why we wanted the emergency services and the doctors to be close together. I'll show you around. Forensic pathologists, legal experts, psychologists. All these crucial services are located in this corridor. The medical team here no longer wants to be a passive witness of domestic violence by only healing the wounds. They want to fight it head on. We all work in the same place, so this helps us better coordinate when we're dealing with tough cases. There's no other way to really tackle domestic violence. Today's first abuse victim is only 14 years old. Dr. Prouveau is here to assist her. She specializes in cases where children are the direct target of domestic and sexual violence. She was only eight years old when the cycle of abuse began. Par rapport à toi, c'était qui C'était quelqu'un de ta famille C'était un voisin C'était des amis L'ami de tes parents. Et donc, quand il t'a emmené dans sa chambre, qu'est-ce qui s'est passé Est-ce que tu me souviens Bah, il me caressait. Mm -hmm. Et après, bah, c'était encore pire, quoi. Alors, c'était pire, c'était quoi, alors Bah, c'était encore pire. Mais à l'époque, tu, tu n'avais pas osé en parler à tes parents ou... Non, c'était qui arrivait avec mon frère. Ton frère t'avait fait aussi des violences, d'accord. On va aller faire l'examen gynécologique dans une autre salle. Quand on sera dans cette salle, au fur et à mesure, je vais t'expliquer comment ça va se passer et comment sera l'examen. Ça a été Oui. It's the first time this teenager undergoes an obstetrical examination. Each word, each move must be delicate. Alors là, je vais juste regarder pour regarder par exemple si est-ce que je vois des cicatrices. Voilà, si je te pince ou si ça fait mal, il faut le dire, d'accord She's now accepting to speak up a bit more, however intimate and personal the topic. If this teenager hadn't already been supervised by another psychotherapist elsewhere, this is the office where she would have had to go next, a relay point of some sort, between the physical and psychological aspects of the victim's trauma. As soon as a victim has left the medical examiner, they come to my office or I go greet them directly in the hallway. This way we can talk it out. And victims know they also have backup and support at a psychological level. Hospital staff wearing lipstick, a symbolic imagery for a simple message. This place is fully dedicated to the service of women who suffer abuse. The personnel has been trained in detecting signs of violence. The idea was to involve personnel at all levels. Colleagues who serve meals, for example. They're trained to identify victims, the typical bruises, sadness. It's often in these moments they open up. They also learn how to tell the difference between types of bruises. Bruises caused by an intentional fall will leave a trace even in the sunken parts of the body. Case in point. Today, a nurse provided the first steps of guidance to such a victim. This 25-year-old woman came here for a routine pregnancy checkup. Aware of this hospital's reputation, and before her husband comes back to pick her up, she's now seeking help. Victims here benefit from medical and legal assistance anonymously and for free. When it first started, I really didn't think what I was experiencing had anything to do with violence. I thought this was the typical kind of crisis that all couples go through. But then it became so frequent. He would throw objects at me, insult me, verbal violence, one thing after the other. 
He caused me to quit my job, to stop seeing my friends. In my mind, I felt like I was in a trap. So right now, you don't really want to file a complaint. But in any case, I'm going to keep aside this medical certificate so you can use it as proof if you ever want to enter a legal procedure. You can contact me at any time. These medical observations, certificates, testimonies, DNA and other biological samples feed a never-growing database. Very useful work at both administrative and legal levels. But Dr. Pruvo's work does not stop here. She also travels to schools and NGOs to raise awareness on domestic violence and to promote her hospital's method of dealing with it. For her involvement, she was awarded the French Legion of Honor last year. What we're accomplishing here is an example to be followed, providing both medical care and legal backup to victims of domestic violence, building bridges between medical and legal services, like we do here. It's something women all across the country should be able to have access to. Indeed, today in France, only two hospitals provide such a service. In this country, domestic violence kills one woman every three days. For more on this, I'm now joined in the studio by Christine Clamance. She's the head of the Fédération Nationale Solidarité Femmes, or National Federation of Women's Solidarity. Hello, thank you very much for coming uh -huh. in. Now, we heard in that report that only two hospitals in France provide such services as the ones uh, talked about in that report. Why not more? Um, this service is a, you know, it's a crossing of a medic medicine and a legal service. In, fa in fact, um, there are only there are only 50 such services in France in uh, French hospitals, and it is very specific. It is so done that so it's uh, 50, not two. Uh, 50, 50 uh, uh, medical legal units mm -hmm. in uh, French hospitals because it is very specific. It is dedicated to uh, victims who uh, want, who have filed a complaint, in fact. So they are dressed by the police to come to this unit. This is how victims go to this unit specifically, and victims of domestic violence as well. Um, it is a very good practice that uh, in this hospital, in fact, because uh, what we know is that uh, a victim, and especially a victim of domestic violence, may not be ready uh, when she has just been assaulted, may not be ready to file a complaint. It may take her sometimes to file a complaint, in fact. And to do so, maybe she will need the help of, um, of a, uh, uh, an association, for instance. So that means that when the physical effects of the violence is still uh, observable, uh, this is the moment when she should go to this uh, medical legal unit, but to go there, she has to first file a complaint. So the fact that this... Uh, but not in this particular hospital, because we saw one woman who went and because she was pregnant and she knew the reputation of the hospital, yes. and so she was like, I'm going to make the most of this yeah. to, uh, to talk mm -hmm. to someone. And as you just said, she was told, here's what you could do, but there yes. was no pressure to actually file a complaint there exactly. and then. Exactly. What happens then once a legal complaint is filed, and, and is there much actual prosecution in France? I mean, what's the difference between complaints and then people are actually being punished for what they've done? Uh, no, all the, all the complaints are not, uh, are not do, do not... Um, not followed through necessarily? Yes, no, not, not necessarily. And this is, this is a, a problem. It's, it's a, um, yes, we, we know that uh, uh, not all uh, the complaints are, are, are followed through by the justice. And this is why uh, the fact that they can go to the medical legal unit is very important because the certificate, the medical certificate that is delivered at the moment is very important uh, in, the in the legal procedure. And the more there will be such testimonies, in fact, such certificates, etc., the more uh, efficient, well, the, the more sure we are that uh, they will be followed by um, by the justice. Some action. But um, it seems that there are still a lot of women who, who won't even recognize that 
they are the victims of domestic violence. I mean, that woman I was just talking about, she said she thought she was just having marital problems. Yes, that's the problem, in fact. This is the... This is the um the way uh, violence uh, settles, in fact, very very often it comes little by little, and the woman doesn't realize that she's victim uh, she's being victim of domestic violence, and the the by the time that she realizes that, very often the um, uh, she has lost touch with uh, family, with friends who could be people who could say well. You know what you're, uh, what you're enduring now is not normal. You know, at some point she's not even able to say, "Well, this is not normal," because there has been all these um, uh, uh, tension. You know, growing little by Building little. Up bit yes. By bit. Now, once the problem is acknowledged, you can go and see someone in person. W what else can you do, though, if you don't have this kind of service nearby that's going to give you advice? I understand you set up a helpline. Yes. Yes. The Yes, 3919. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yes, uh, this is uh, very important because uh, it allows the women who are not ready to go to an association, to go to the hospital, to go to the police, then to go to the helpline and just assess that they are being victim of domestic violence. This is the very often this is the, the first thing they want to know. Am I being a uh, victim of domestic violence? Because they are not sure. You know, mm -hmm. and at some point, because they've seen um, an ad about the, the helpline or they've heard about it, then they say, "Well, I will. Well, I will try and see uh, because." We know that it is anonymous, so uh, they know that they won't be. Uh, there, there is no. Um, the husband won't be. Uh, well, the partner won't be. Uh, won't know aware. that she. Okay. Yes, aware that they have <laughs> called the, <laughs> the helpline. All right. I'm afraid we run out of time. Thank you very much, though, for coming in, Christine Clamance, and thank you for the work that you do. Thank